going to be Team Ascension Psycho versus TT Root Seeds Baldwin, and we do have bios for them. Moving on in, Team Ascension Psycho is one of Team Ascension's newest members. He comes with a lot of experience, though. He's a top NA Zerg that delivers consistently in Clan Wars and on the ladder. And has a nice smile to boot. Yep. And Pretty solid player. Moving on into... Root Seeds Baldwin. He is Jonathan Baldwin, a 19-year-old American player, formerly a competitive Halo 3 player, switching to StarCraft 2 after seeing it at MLG event in 2012. And I can totally feel where he's coming with, coming from in that as I uh, actually got to attend MLG Columbus. I think it was in 2012. And absolutely really? awesome I think I experience. Was there too. Yeah, we were in the front row, man. We were there the whole weekend. Oh, it was, it was sweet. Uh, you know, and just being front and center, seeing that stage, it was definitely could leave an impression on someone. Obviously, it did Baldwin. Uh, so much so that he played at the MLG 2012 Winter Championships. He won $150 in gear at the Esports Initiative LAN and achieved Grandmaster for the first time in 2013 and subsequently picked up by Seed in March of 2014. So that's quite a resume for a fairly new player who just kind of said, hey, I'm going to play this game because it looks awesome at an event. Yeah, honestly, Baldwin is a really, really solid player, and uh, I, I feel like you know I've seen Psycho. He's also a, a good player, but I just based on notoriety, I feel like Baldwin has definitely gotten quite a few results for himself. Considering you know he is still sort of an up and coming player, obviously on an academy team and everything, and I, I feel like he maybe in some senses would be considered the favorite in this game. Well, we'll see how that ends up turning out as we do move into game numero quattro on Galaxy Blood Mist, one of those maps provided by the Galaxy map making team, which we have partnered with in the lower right hand corner representing Team Ascension and the Zerg race, as well as the color orange, it is Psycho. And his opponent spawning up in the top left hand corner of the map. Representing Team Rootseed Academy, it is Baldwin. So ZVZ, and uh, you know you haven't been around, but uh, me and Galligation always talk about this is one of our favorite matches to watch, especially of the mirror matches, just because of all of the various things that can come out. And you know we have some of the most exciting sub thirty food games you can ever see. Oh man, that that actually does sound amazing. I love seeing like really really low food count games, or uh, you know army supply whatever you call it, uh, just because there's usually a lot of either micro involved or you're constantly constantly trading units. Yeah, and we actually saw one last week that was actually blew my mind. It was a uh, a, a zergling baneling sort of all in held off with only zerglings and queens. <laughs> That is impressive. Wow, that that is a really scary all in in its own right. Um, but I don't know what what is sort of like the more typical thing to see on uh, a ZVZ these days, and especially like I actually haven't seen as much of this map, uh, you know, outside of maybe SC two CTL. Yeah, and you know, there's fairly longish ground paths, so. Uh, the aggression is a little bit harder to maintain in this base, but Psycho's going to go ahead and go hatch first while uh, Seed Baldwin is putting down his pool. It's about half done now, so he's going to have the ability to get those queens up as he has not followed it with gas, so likely not see that super-duper early speed. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, it seems like almost a large portion of the time we see these one player goes for an early pool without gas and one player goes for an early pool with gas, and we see who has the better control of Zerglings speedlings versus slowlings. Well, I will tell you, man, it is much easier to control those speedlings over the slow Zerglings because they just they automatically get the big surrounds off that you want them to get. Um, but you know, we do actually have Baldwin, as you were saying, kind of similar to what you were saying at least. Uh, not exactly an early pool or anything, but gas guys are going down for Baldwin. No gas geysers down for Psycho. And that's already a bit of a difference. Yeah, I feel like we're going to see some just early queens out of both players here. Not a whole lot of aggression, which is sort of abnormal. It seems like most of the ZVZs we've seen have been highly aggressive. But it is also cool to see those sort of less aggressive macro -y ZVZs as you can get into some really neat control mm -hmm. in the uh, the mid-game there. But Overlord's headed around to be able to keep the vision. I actually really like Baldwin's Overlord placement, kind of catching the two ground travel paths here right in front of Psycho's base. 
yeah, these are definitely really nice placements for uh, these overlords because, again, the big thing that you're going to want to see is, is your, is your opponent making a lot of zerglings and sending them across the map? And, of course, also seeing small things like, is there a spine crawler being built or something? That's also nice information, but he can actually scout that out, or a Baldwin can, with some zerglings because he's going to have a speed, his opponent's not going to have speed. And that's actually one thing I want to talk about a little bit because sometimes when you are the player that foregoes speed for quite a bit of time, as a Psycho has done, it can be a little bit difficult to really get a good scout out on your opponent. Um, just because, again, your Zerglings can't really move across the map against the Speedlings of your opponent. But there are two Slowlings here coming in of, of mm -hmm. Baldwin's... Oh, wow, he actually doesn't make it up the ramp. Juking his way past two Queens and a spine crawler gets a full scout, <laughs> complete full scout, on the base of Psycho. Mm-hmm. Sees that there are two gas geysers down, just now starting to mine. He definitely knows, okay, you went for a gasless opening. How is he going to react now? He's just actually just continuing to join up, grabbing his own second and third gas geysers. And uh, uh, are we? if we see a fourth ex gas geyser, oh, yeah, we are going to be seeing that alongside the lair. Could this be a mutals play? Yeah, I kind of feel like he does uh, just finish up his... Uh, speed as well. There's not really any Zerglings been in production yet, so I feel like the, the speed at this point is just kind of a, uh, a knee-jerk reaction, just kind of I have to get it to keep myself safe, especially if he's going for Mutalis, which is a bit more of a harder opening to defend if you have some aggression out of your opponent, which it doesn't seem like we are seeing. Yeah, pretty interesting, but we do actually have that uh, good old wall in that Zerg players love to do with the double evolution chamber plus a Roach Horn coming out for Psycho. So Psycho is going to be going for a much more Roach oriented style. Uh, third Has base coming out of Baldwin. Hmm, actually, third base coming out of Baldwin. That is actually pretty interesting. His Lair Tech is going to be finishing up. And I'm actually really curious because you don't really just need four gas guys just to make a lot of roaches, but his la Psycho's lair tech is going to be pretty late. Oh, there's that spire. Immediately, mm -hmm. once lair is finished, the spire goes down, so he definitely has mm -hmm. in his plan to get those mutalists out. And uh, how do you feel about mutalists these days, especially with the uh, with the spore crawlers doing all the damage to the mutalists? <laughs> you know, the more that I talk to a lot of Zerg players, the more I hear, you know, it's sort of that Korean trend catching on where a lot of players don't really like to go for the big old uh, Mutals play anymore. But what's really interesting to me is that this is not exactly going to be totally normal from Psycho. He's actually hiding a lot of Zerglings in his main base. And he has four Gas guys. so what's gonna happen over here is Baldwin sees, oh, you have a Roach Warrior and Double Evolution Chambers. Okay, that's cool. He's gonna be thinking that his opponent's gonna be going for a lot of the Roaches, but no, he actually <laughs> managed to break through that Queen Fall and sees all of these slow Zerglings. I I almost wonder what exactly was Cycle planning. I mean, he doesn't have speed on these Zerglings. But he doesn't have a Baneling Nest. That almost kind of makes you freak out a little bit. Like, what do you have up your sleeve? Yeah. <laughs> You've got an awful lot of Slowlings huh. at this stage of the game. But four I, Roaches I, I, and a Hydralis Den coming out now, uh, followed by Psycho. So uh, looks like he's maybe just going to... He's not even researching speed, so he's just going to be hanging on these... I wonder if that was actually a mistake. It's hard to say, because yeah. uh, the I, roaches are out, Hydralists oh, are going to be oh. following. Hmm. He is getting Zergling speed up now, and he managed to kill off the third expansion, which is a really, really nice pickoff for Psycho. Of course, his own third expansion about halfway done. Uh, the big question is going to be, once... And look at this, Bald Baldwin was... I think you were definitely right. Baldwin was kind of like, what are you doing with all the speedlings? Look at his natural expansion. He has just completely walled himself in with those evolution chambers, maybe expecting a kind of bailing bust or something to come out... Uh, but now he does have the Mutalist, and is he going to be able to get some nice damage done? There's not really a whole lot of anti-air available until those Hydras will actually pop out and get to that third. He did have a Spore Crawler queued to be built at that third base, but the drone was not able to get there. And this is actually a really aggressive third base here. I, I mean, why do you think he would put a third base right out front? You know, I think that he maybe was uh, feeling like he could still secure it by getting out. Because, again, his Hydras are popping out, so he just needed a couple extra seconds, maybe like... 15, 20 seconds, and he actually would have been totally okay, and it actually looks like he may still be okay, because the Hydros are now starting to engage some of these Mutalists. The Hydros definitely get the better end of the engagement in general, but Baldwin has a lot of Mutalists over here, and he's actually trading okay, but he's going to have to back out now after losing a couple of those. Yeah, that transfuse on one Hydralis, I think, basically turned the entire yeah. tide of that battle, because without that uh, without that transfuse, I think the Hydralis probably would have got the short end of the stick, but now more Hydralis are able to reinforce. Mutalists continue oh! to come out. 
I don't know what I think about this. Uh, going and engaging over here for Baldwin, he ends up losing a couple of those mutals, another one very, very low in health, and... Now that oh, speed God. is finished for Psycho, there's a ton of Zerglings on the map, and Baldwin just doesn't have much of a response to it. He is getting Baneling speed right now, but he's going to lose his third base once oh. again. And that's not something you can afford to have happen right now. Those 5th and 6th Gas Geysers are so unbelievably important in this matchup, but I like what he's doing right now. He's moving into the main base with a couple of these Zerglings, trying to do whatever damage he can, using a couple of the Zerglings to buy time uh, for... Cycle Zerglings to not really be able to get on top of the remainder of them and picks off as many drones as he can. Now How Zerglings headed into the third base, but he is shooed away by the number of Zerglings and the Roaches and Hydras to follow behind. Not really uh, seeing any Banelings out of him though. Uh, there is a couple here now just catching up to the fray. S Baneling speed centrifugal hooks is about half done. So once that's done, I think it'll maybe get him a little bit more mobility out of those and to put pressure on these. But the Zerglings of Bald, or I'm sorry, Psycho now are just. <laughs> running into a brick wall of banelings. Those are about the best baneling hits he could ask for, but I mean, Psycho just kind of had those Zerglings left over. He wasn't really trying to reproduce them in large numbers. He's making Roach Hydra now, and that's going to be the scary unit composition that Baldwin's going to have to find some sort of answer for right now. And he actually sort of walled himself off here by with uh, with morphing banelings, but the Hydralis uh, doing quite a bit of damage while the Roach is soaking up and blocking the Zerglings from getting out. One baneling does blow up on the Roaches at second and third as well. Oh, more Hydro's gonna be coming in across the map for Psycho. Will it be enough? The Mutals now starting to target firing down those Hydro's, but the Hydro's also getting some pretty good shots off. Oh, uh, Baldwin actually looking like he may be able to hold on for a little bit longer oh, just in terms of roaches. his Mutals count, but... The Roaches! Nice split uh, on the Roaches. They're sending a clutch group into the natural expansion and another group into the main base working on those mineral lines, and there's really not enough Hydro's to be able to effectively split them up to really deal with these Roaches. Yeah, those 1-1 one, one upgrades also going to allow them to tank those shots from the Mutals much, much more easily. Because you know what? Even if those Roaches would eventually get cleaned up, guess what? They're going to continue to do damage until they're cleaned up. And they're actually doing quite a bit now. Going after a lot of these drones. So far, we've already had 16, 17 more drones continuing to fall. Baldwin is going to have to clean this up and go for some kind of giant counter swing because he's basically at half the drones of his opponent. I mean, even looking at the army supply, he's at half the army supply as well, 36 to 62 ah. right now, uh, as there are still a group of roaches from Psycho working away at Baldwin's third base. He is just not able to get that base up after losing all those drones and not having any bases. He's just in a really rough spot with Psycho now coming out with uh, plus one, plus one for these Hydralis and roaches as well, doing a lot of damage. Yeah, or is plus two, plus two coming out for those rich and Hydals. And that's the thing. Right now, Baldwin's already down in economy. He is sort of down in the army. He has to make ha magic happen now. If that 2-2 two, two upgrade finishes, that's closed curtains. It's already in a really difficult situation. I don't think he can take another big deficit like that. He's going to try and pick off some of these Hydals. There uh, are still enough Mutalists on the field it. here to catch these uh, little splinter groups of Hydalists off guard. And he's actually doing quite a bit of damage to him with those Mutalists, but he does have one out front. He could have maybe microed that back a little bit, but taking out a lot of creep here. But there are Spore Crawlers at this third base. These Hydalists aren't going to be able to push in here. Yeah, this is the problem. Yeah, he was actually doing a good job. He was actually trading okay against the Hydalists with those Mutalists with some nice little control and everything. But... At the end of the day, he doesn't have a follow-up. He had to do way more damage than just picking off a couple of stray mute or hydralis. He needed to get some big economic damage done, maybe kill off a third expansion. He had to do damage with those, and now he's traded those mutalists. They're in such small numbers that he really can't do a whole lot with them anymore. He is kind of trying to find angles here at the third base to do any kind of damage he can because he has, as you said, he kind of has to do something right now to e equalize himself, but I just don't think he has the units to do it with the queen hydralis there coming to reinforce or his one spine spore crawler at the north side but he does have zerglings continuing to run around and harass but the psycho had just has enough units that he can kind of keep him around and that's wow. the gg out of baldwin really sick game over there uh from both these players but i gotta hand it to psycho man he has brought it back with that final game or not final game of the series but with one more game he has brought it back to a tie from an o2 deficit team ascension they brought it to the ace match yeah, this is a best of seven, so it's not quite the ace oh, wow, match wow, yet. Sorry, let's not. Sorry, I, wow. I, we're I, excited, I, but let's not get too excited. Uh, <laughs> we'll, now it looks like a little bit of a doofus. All right, all right. <laughs>
But it is two to two nonetheless, so it does make this even. It basically leaves us with a best of three to wrap it out. So back to a score to zero to zero as I think of it in my mind. So you really have to, you know, this being also a uh, pro league style, you've already got your matches set. So if you're a team that puts out your best players early, maybe you're shaking in your pants a little bit more. But if you save your best for last, you're in a really good position. But nonetheless. Uh, we will go into game five, but before we do that, I want to remind you that MythLogic is the sponsor of SC2 CTL this season. They are an awesome maker of custom gaming laptops, and now I believe they're even moving into desktops. So you check out their website, MythLogic.com. They have some really awesome uh, art, uh, custom, custom airbrush art stuff I think they've been putting on their laptops lately. Um, check them out. You can spec out your laptops there or uh, just get an idea of what your dream machine would be. I definitely do that once in a while just to see what the latest and greatest is. They, uh, their motto is truly custom, and as such, they have some really cool options that some other uh, similar providers don't have. So check them out. They've given up the prize pool for this season, $700. 700 bones on the line for the Grandmaster Division here of SC2 CTL. So definitely something these teams are uh, having their eye on as we continue to go forward. Um, also, I am Wingnut SC, your host this evening, and with me is Fear Dragon. Joining me, he is at Fear Dragon 64 If you don't follow him already, definitely follow him. He does some awesome stuff, and we thank you so much for taking time out of your busy Busy day after just starting a new job, running in your house, having not <laughs> eaten all day, sitting down with me to cast some StarCraft. Dude, you know what, Wingnut? Ignoring the fact that your name also has the word nut in it, which already makes me a little bit hungrier, <laughs> StarCraft is all I need to eat, man. And I know that you feel the same way. Just, I'm good to cast more StarCraft whenever. And uh, I uh, thank you guys for bringing me on. It is an absolute pleasure and a privilege to be able to cast on here as a guest for the SC2 CTL. Because I know you guys have some really, really great cast, much better casters than I am um, coming up as some guest casters in the coming weeks. Yeah, following on uh, Thursday, I think we have lined up QXC will be joining us. Yeah. But we do appreciate our guest casters. This is starting the SC2 CTL guest caster circuit. Galligation, as you can see, is hanging out in chat. He's going to be doing some things on the back end, doing some writing and other cool things that will continue to promote the SC2 CTL. But he has allowed Fear Dragon and others to come and take his spot for now. And uh, we do appreciate those people coming out. And thank you so much, Fear Dragon. As I said, if you don't follow him already, go out to Twitter, at FearDragon64. He's a cool guy, does some oh, cool things you. in StarCraft. And it has been a pleasure so far, but we are not anywhere near done yet, sir, as we have more games to continue. But going into game number five, it is going to be Team Ascension's 